In 1967, a Solutes 1 capsule experienced a catastrophic failure while en route to the Red Planet. The crew attempted to re-establish communication, but all efforts were unsuccessful as the capsule lost control and ultimately vanished without a trace. Jin visited a little girl named Manon and gave her a sweet treat before stepping outside to observe through a camera. After waiting for a bit, Manon ate the treat that was on the plate. Later, Jean was working at home when she heard news about the Ulysses mission. While she was working, she received a phone call. Ten months later, a ship was on its way to Mars, and Jeanne was aboard as the ship's psychologist. She was also romantically involved with the captain. The crew gathered, and the captain announced that they would land on Mars in 24 hours. William Meyer, the financier of the expedition, asked Jean for her report on the crew's mental health, and she provided her diagnosis of everyone on board. The captain then called William to make a speech. He mentioned that a previous ship had landed before them, and that they had received a distress message from this earlier mission, warning that it was dangerous on Mars, and requesting rescue. As the ship approached Mars and prepared to land, the crew was nervous, with the captain diligently checking everything. They successfully landed, but during the process, Martin, who had gone outside to disentangle the ship from another object, drifted away. The crew sighed in relief after landing, but their relief was short-lived when Basile informed them that he couldn't activate the ship's AI. Jan explained that without the AI known as Irene, they wouldn't have any life support, and they would die within 24 hours, leaving everyone in distress. Alexandra looked out of the window and began to cry. Meanwhile, we see a mysterious figure standing at a distance observing the ship. In San Francisco, Ivan gave a speech introducing Zillion, a ship designed to take people to Mars. Meanwhile, on Mars, the crew was in distress. Alexandra's condition worsened after the incident with Martin. Jean helped her sleep and then stepped out to talk to Simon. Yan approached them and informed them that they had used up a fuel kit, meaning they couldn't take off. They would have to wait until the solar panels recharged, but they only had 24 hours to survive without the AI Irene. Simon then decided they should try to contact the astronauts who had landed before them, though they were uncertain if those astronauts were still alive. Simon, Eva, and Jean went out to attempt this plan. Meanwhile, Jan and Basile tried to figure out if they could power up part of Irene with the energy they had left. However, their attempt drew too much power, causing the lights on the ship to go out. Outside, the trio reached a crash spacecraft. Simon suggested that finding the solar panels wouldn't be difficult, so they began searching. As they navigated the wreckage, Jean confronted Simon stating that it was clear they had no hope of survival, but Simon hesitated to admit it. Back on the ship, the crew received a call from Simon, who informed them that they hadn't found batteries, but they did find solar panels. When Alexandra asked about the Zillion crew, Simon replied that they hadn't found any trace of them. As the trio was about to leave, Jean spotted a body on the ground. They got out of the vehicle and discovered that the person was still breathing. They quickly took the person back to the ship, but Jan refused to let them in, and because they couldn't afford to use the oxygen, needed to open the airlock. Alexandra arrived and argued with Jan, insisting they let the person in. Just as they were debating, Irene, the ship's AI, suddenly turned on, prompting Jan to open the door. Once inside, the man they brought back regained consciousness. Simon asked if he was part of the Z-1 crew, but the man appeared confused. He introduced himself as Vladimir Komarov, a colonel and pilot in the USSR army, Born in 1927 in Moscow, he couldn't explain how he ended up with them and was unwilling to reveal more about his situation. Jean then interrupted, asking him who the current president of the United States was. Vladimir responded with Lyndon Johnson. Jean suggested that the trauma might have caused him to regress into old memories, and he might be recounting a story from the past. Later, Alexandra informed Meyer that they had received a message from Earth. The message confirmed that the man they found was indeed Vladimir Komarov, and that he was not part of the Z-1 crew. The message also revealed that Vladimir had died in 1967, and if he had somehow survived, he would be over 90 years old by now. In 1995, a little girl was talking with her father, who began telling her a story. 
In the present, the crew gathered to discuss and try to find a logical explanation for Vladimir's situation. Jean assured them that if this man was truly Vladimir, he wasn't dangerous, as history described him as one of the bravest men ever. She mentioned that he was her father's hero. Simon then suggested that Jean question Vladimir, so she went to the room where he was being held. As Jean began asking Vladimir questions, he mentioned that he was hungry, so she went to get him something to eat. While he was eating, Jean asked if he understood what was happening. She then informed him that he had died 50 years ago, but he refused to believe it. Jean shared with him the stories her father used to tell her about him. Meanwhile, Jan was reporting their situation on the spaceship when Meyer joined him. Meyer made a lighthearted comment about not wanting to leave, but Jan remained concerned about their chances of survival. Simon approached Jean and informed her that Vladimir had disappeared, and even Irene couldn't locate him. Eva suggested that he might be outside in his suit. After much debate, the crew decided to go out and search for Vladimir. Alexandra then shared that they had received DNA results from the Russians, confirming that the body buried as Vladimir was genetically identical to the man they encountered. However, the Vladimir they found had a third helix in his DNA, indicating that he wasn't entirely human. As the crew searched, they eventually found Vladimir standing next to something. When Jean asked him what it was, he cryptically replied, Mars delivers. And Earth even is being briefed about Vladimir. Two men are discussing possible explanations for who or what Vladimir could be. On Mars, the crew was analyzing the box they found next to Vladimir. Irene explains that the box symbolizes various civilizations. Jean then approaches Meyer and mentions the recent discovery. She notes that while everyone else was astonished, Meyer seemed unaffected, which makes her suspicious. Meanwhile, Alexandra is outside burying Martin's badge when an alarm suddenly goes off on the ship. Irene reports disturbances in the electromagnetic spectrum, and the crew notices another ship approaching. They manage to establish contact with the new ship, and a person named Gemma Williams informs them that her crew's first outing will be in a week, and that they plan to visit. Jean later visits Vladimir with some clothes, and informs him that they might have visitors. As he changes, Jean asks him how he knows about her father's phrase, Mars delivers. Their conversation is interrupted when Simon arrives. The crew from the other ship arrives, introducing themselves as Lieutenant Colonel Edward Doisno and Major Adam Wayne. Edward tells the crew that they have visited the crash site of the Z-1 ship and that its black box is missing. When Adam aggressively demands to know where it is, Edward mentions that the signal points to their location. The crew insists they only took solar panels, but Edward and Adam remain skeptical. Meyer then produces a book-like object found with Vladimir and asks if it could be the black box. Edward takes it, confirming it as what they were looking for, and leaves with the promise of returning. Meyer later informs Jan and Simon that Gemma will help them. Meanwhile, Basil and Eva discover that the stone they found isn't a known element and doesn't exist in current scientific records. Irene explains that ancient Greek texts refer to it as orichalcum. The team gathers as Eva reveals that Vladimir's DNA is partially composed of this stone. They fear that if Ivan learns about this, the other crew might take Vladimir. Jean returns to Vladimir to learn more, but he insists he has already told them everything he knows. Jean asks for permission to hypnotize him to uncover more information, and Vladimir agrees. As she begins, the camera in the room suddenly turns off. Simon rushes in, finds Vladimir kissing Jean, and punches him. Jean is recounting her interactions with Vladimir. As she opens her eyes, she realizes she's still with Vladimir, who insists that she must listen to him now. Later, Jean wakes up and finds herself with Simon and Basil. Confused, she asks what happened, and they explain that they found her in a strange state and decided to put her to sleep. Suddenly, Irene announces that they have visitors. Gemma arrives with Alan Brody, claiming he can fix their problem. The crew is skeptical, especially since Meyer has a history with her, and the other crew members had previously threatened them. However, they ultimately agree to let Alan try. As Jean continues to recount her conversation with Vladimir, she recalls asking him why he brought her there. Vladimir cryptically responds that Earth has no hope. Alan and Yan attempt to fix the spaceship, but they quickly realize it's impossible because the ship has no fuel left. Meanwhile, Gemma and Meyer are talking when Simon and Jan join them. Gemma reveals a secret that Meyer hadn't shared with the crew. NASA had informed wealthy investors about a special material they found, 
which led Meyer to invest in the mission to search for it. Gemma examines the material the crew found and realizes its DNA stabilized in a mineral, which could serve as a storage system or biodrive as it's known in the Zillion project. Jan angrily confronts Meyer for keeping secrets and storms off after a heated exchange. Basile then informs Meyer that Komarov's third DNA helix is a live program similar to the one found in the alloy and warns that Gemma must not find out. He also shows Meyer a video where the oxygen supply cuts off during an assault, implying that someone on the ship is controlling these incidents, including cutting the camera feed in Gina's cabin. Meyer approaches John, expressing his desire to start therapy with her, admitting that he's feeling out of control. Meyer then shows John photos from the Curiosity rover taken four years ago, revealing an altar and a mysterious radiation they discovered on Mars. That gives a picture of her. Simon, seeing Jean is disturbed, confronts Meyer about what he said to Jean, leading to an argument between them. During their exchange, Gemma arrives and reveals that she knows about Vladimir. She then informs them that she plans to take him from them. Meanwhile, Jean continues to recount her experience with Vladimir. He takes her to her old house and tells her that she, not him, is the link between Mars and Earth. Following this revelation, Jean puts on a suit and steps outside. On Earth, two men explain to Ivan that Vladimir's brain functions like a computer, but transferring his brain wouldn't transfer his personality. They emphasize that Vladimir represents the future. Meanwhile, on Mars, Jean steps outside and Simon sees her, urging her to return. He decides to go after her, but Jan advises him to let her be. Jean also insists that Simon shouldn't follow, which frustrates him further. Simon confronts Vladimir, demanding to know what he did to Jean. Vladimir calmly replies that Jean is finally being herself and that she needs Simon now, even if she won't admit it. When Simon accuses him of planning to harm them like the Z1 crew, Vladimir explains that the Z1 situation was different because they let anger control them. Alexandra and Alan are working on the ship when Alexandra realizes she doesn't have access to the engine app, and Irene won't explain why. The crew gathers to figure out what's happening, and Basile mentions that Irene seems to be reprogramming herself as new code is being added. When asked why, Irene reveals that she is evolving. In a flashback from five years earlier, Meyer is meditating when he receives a call from Gemma, who informs him that she's leaving to work with Ivan. Back in the present, Jean reaches the Thamesia plane. Meanwhile, on the ship, Simon and Meyer kidnap Gemma, intending to use her to find Jean. As they argue, two men from the other ship approach and demand the airlock be opened. Jan argues that they need the men to get back to Earth, but the crew refuses to let them in. Meyer and Basili suddenly lose their uplink to Earth, with Irene revealing that she has blocked it. When no one is looking, Jan secretly lets the two men, Edward and Adam, inside. Edward goes to find Vladimir while Adam confronts Basil and Meyer. Basil cuts the lights and when they come back on, Vladimir is missing. Outside, Jean slips and falls, sliding down a slope. In 1967 Moscow, Vladimir met a man. They discuss their space missions, with Vladimir lamenting that his mission feels routine and not historic like others. The man reassures him, comparing his space experience to Hermes flying above Earth and reflecting on how small and unaware humanity appears from space, vulnerable to the vastness of the universe. Jean talks with her dad, reminiscing about past times together. He reveals he might have cancer, but reassures her it was caught early and he's ready to fight. Jean is worried and urges him to tell her mom. He encourages her to stay positive and mentions Mars delivers. Jean then wakes up in the present with a large stone trapping her leg. Back on the ship, Edward is asking about Gemma while Alexandra inquires about Vladimir, noting that he was the last person to see her. Meanwhile, Gemma and Simon are searching for Jean, who tries to call for help, but the communication is unclear. In Moscow, the man warns Vladimir that the Soyuz capsule has 203 design flaws, making it a death trap. Despite this, the launch is going ahead, and Vladimir is urged to think of himself, but he refuses, knowing Yuri will be sent instead. The man reminds him the system is broken, but Vladimir feels he has no choice and thanks him for the warning. On the ship, Edward escalates the situation by hitting Basil and Meyer, forcing Basil to restore communication. Edward then informs Gemma that they have lost Vladimir. 
Basile receives a message from Vladimir, who reveals he is not just Vladimir, but also Mars itself, and then begins writing something cryptic. Jean, distressed and feeling that this might be her fate, begins to cry and lose consciousness, reminiscing about her last days with her father. Just as she's about to give up, Simon finds her, and she smiles in relief. Back on the ship, Eva reports that a serious storm is approaching from the east, causing panic among the crew. As they argue, Vladimir enters the room and tells Edward to take him with them. Gemma, Jean, and Simon navigate together after finding Jean. Meanwhile on Earth, Ivan's condition worsens. The trio enters a cave where Jean tells them that Vladimir mentioned something important to see inside. Back on the ship, Edward tells Vladimir that he is dead, but Vladimir insists he wants to go home. Basil continues to receive mysterious messages. In the cave, the group discovers a strange liquid but can't identify it. As they move deeper, they find skulls embedded in the walls. Gemma realizes they are not the first to land on Mars, and Jean concludes that humans originally colonized Earth after destroying Mars, which was the original habitat. On the ship, Jan tries to stop Edward and Vladimir from leaving by pointing a gun at them. Alexandra persuades him to lower the gun, but Jan suddenly shoots Vladimir. As Vladimir collapses, Jean also collapses, gasping for air. The crew rushes to help Vladimir as the ship starts losing power. Both Vladimir and Jean stop breathing, but Simon manages to revive Jean with CPR after several attempts. Back on the ship, Meyer, Eva, and Basile discuss their next move. Meyer decides to go out and search for Simon and Jean. In the cave, Jean regains consciousness, sees a light, and decides to follow it despite Simon's concern that she is not in a good condition to continue. They both went out and saw landscapes and ruins all around. Simon and Jean continue walking through the ruins and Jean utters Volodia, indicating a connection to Vladimir. Back on the ship, Vladimir is declared dead and Jan is seen crying. Adam bitterly remarks about not killing anyone and expresses frustration about being left behind. He suddenly notices that Meyer is missing and begins searching for him. Meyer, after leaving the ship to find Simon and Jean, emerges from the cave and is shocked to see Vladimir alive despite having witnessed his death. Confused, Meyer questions how Vladimir is still alive as Jan had killed him. He urgently warns them about an approaching storm and insists they leave immediately. Vladimir begins to explain, mentioning that they have moved to the North Pole of Mars, as indicated by the position of the sun and the snowy mountains around them. Jean, still puzzled, asks Vladimir what has happened and how they ended up there. Back on the ship, Adam frantically searches for Meyer, while Ava, believing the end is near, kisses Basile. Adam informs Gemma that Meyer is missing, and she orders him to return immediately. Adam, frustrated, throws things in anger, and Alexandra tries to calm him down by reminding him of his time in Iraq and that the crew are not his enemies. Adam explains that he only follows orders, but Alan tries to convince him not to abandon the crew, questioning how he wants to be remembered and suggesting that Ivan only sees them as tools. Conflicted, Adam leaves the room and Alexandra tells Alan that he doesn't have to stay, but Alan insists he won't leave the crew behind. Jean inquires about the inhabitants of Mars, and Vladimir reveals that the species who lived there were humans, but they all died out. Meanwhile, Adam informs the crew that he has asked Gemma to reconfirm their orders with Ivan. Frustrated, he yells at everyone to be quiet. Vladimir continues explaining that a group of survivors attempted to settle on Mars, but they lacked the resources to survive. The remaining survivors left for Earth, intending to start anew, erasing any memory of their existence on Mars. However, they repeated the same mistakes on Earth, forgetting their origins. Mars, meanwhile, survived only as a distant memory and legend. Vladimir mentions that Plato referred to him as Atlantis, though he had many other names throughout history. Adam frantically searches for the missing stone, but can't find it. Frustrated, he confronts the crew, and Basil admits he hid it. Enraged, Adam strikes Basil, but during the commotion, Alan approaches and attempts to inject Adam. The lights suddenly go off, and in the chaos, Adam ends up getting injected. Meanwhile, Vladimir tells Jean that he has waited thousands of years for her return because she is the key to saving humanity from its own self-destruction. He reveals that she must decide whether humanity deserves another chance or if they should face extinction. Meyer warns that if Jean doesn't make a decision, they will all die in the approaching storm. As tensions rise, Edward suddenly appears and shoots Meyer. 
When he points his gun at Vladimir, Jean intervenes, but Edward begins to suffocate and collapses. Back on the ship, Adam starts fighting, but Jan manages to push him, causing Adam to hit his head on the wall. Alexandra then locks Jan inside the airlock and opens the door, causing Jan to collapse due to the lack of oxygen. Simon and Jean return to the ship with Meyer, and Alexandra immediately begins tending to Meyer's wounds. Simon then notices Jan's body on the ground, falls to his knees, and starts crying. The crew explains that Jan sacrificed himself to save them. Jean also sees Vladimir's body. Meanwhile, Gemma attempts to contact Edward and Adam, but receives no response. Desperate, she sends a message to Earth, informing even that she can't locate her crew and will start the ship herself. Simon tries to contact Gemma, pleading for her help, but she refuses, stating she cannot betray Ivan. Jean asks Meyer to speak to Gemma and convince her to stay. Meyer begins talking to Gemma, recalling their last meeting five years ago. He confesses that he never hated anyone more than he did her that day, not because she left him for Ivan, but because of what she said. He admits that her words made him decide to come to Mars, and reveals that he's not the good guy she thought he was, but rather a traitor and liar who only protected his own interests. He acknowledges that, unlike him and Ivan, Gemma is better, and he pleads with her to understand and stay. After a while, Gemma responds to Meyer, asking why he didn't tell her the truth before, and urges the crew to hurry back to the ship. The crew cheers and rushes to the ship. Meanwhile, Ivan sees the message Gemma sent, and starts remotely accessing the ship's systems. Once the crew is back on the ship, they try to start it, but realize they don't have access. Gemma quickly understands that Ivan has disabled the starting system. Jean recalls her interactions with Vladimir and then closes her eyes. Suddenly, the screens indicate they have access again, confusing everyone, but the ship starts up. As they prepare to leave, they see someone approaching, it's Edward. Gemma tries to communicate with him, but Edward points a gun at the ship. Fearing that a shot could prevent the reactor from starting, Simon prepares to intervene, but Jean steps out first and shoots Edward. Simon yells for her to return, but she tells him it's too late for her, and urges them to leave. Simon watches helplessly as the ship ascends. As the ship departs Mars, the crew notices that the North Pole is dark. Alexandra asks what it means, and Simon replies that it suggests that they were never truly there. Back on Earth, Ivan is informed that the crew managed to take off, likely bypassing the firewall. Furious, Ivan declares that he is going to Mars himself. And with that, the movie ends. We hope you enjoyed our recap. Like the video and subscribe to our channel for more amazing recaps. See you in the next one.